Today I'm going to show you how to make your videos look more filmic, and I don't mean raising your black levels or holding weird objects up to your lens, I mean actually emulating film. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. So when I made that LUT Roundup video last month, many of you were interested in Film Convert, and more specifically, their new Nitrate upgrade. So I reached out to them, and they were willing to sponsor this video, and also provide a beta for their new plugin. Now this beta is only for Premiere Pro, so I'm not going to be able to do this demonstration in Resolve, but when the final version is released, it should work pretty much the same, just add it in OpenFX. Now the biggest part of this update is the integration of Cineon, which for those that don't know, is an entire system based around a digital film workflow. But for our practical uses, this brings us a big advantage in Film Convert Nitrate, in that now we can keep the log form format of our videos. So we're not going to lose our log gamma encoding anymore as soon as we apply film convert and this will make for a much smoother and much more powerful grading process. And I also have good news since I know many of you like shooting in HLG. Well, HLG is counted as log in Nitrate as well, so you aren't restricted to shooting in S-Log2 or V-Log L, you can use the hybrid gammas. And in fact, every clip you just watched was shot in HLG3 on the Sony a7 III. I shot them on the a7 III because I was away at Sony Condo this last week, and so obviously I was using Sony gear, but I think it turned out to be a good test given the limited codec and bit depth on the Sony cameras. And I have to say I was quite pleased with the results, but remember, if you plan on shooting HLG on the Sony for this purpose, that you use the Rec 709 and not the BT 2020 color mode to get the best results with Film Convert. So let's take a closer look at some of these clips and I'll give you some tips on how I graded them as well as talk about some of the improvements of Film Convert Nitrate. Okay, so first up, applying the plugin is really easy. You can just go up here and type in Film Convert and we have Film Convert Nitrate, I also have Film Convert Pro, which is the previous version and we can just drag it down and drop it on the clip and then we'll see it over here. If this was resolved, like I said, you have to use Open Effects, but it's all pretty much the same. The interface is the same throughout. So now we have Film Convert Nitrate here. Now, one of the things that I'd like to do and that I recommend you do is that you make a custom page for this. So you can see up here, I have my Film Convert page because this is going to be for grading process I like to have the you know picture a little bit bigger I like to have my scopes on the side and I'm, this is more of a color grading page but not using Lumetri instead we're using the film convert tab and it can be done just by having your effects on the side panel so now we're going to go through some of the settings here the first one that you're going to do is choose your camera now this is the same way as before you're going to have to download free camera packs for the camera that you're using and you just go in here and choose so this one was Sony and then A7 Mark III, and then I shot an HLG3, and you can see they have a lot of the picture profiles for the Sony here. You just have to respect the color modes that they advise. Like I said, they're not listed here for HLG, but you're going to want to use Rec. 709. Then just click apply, and then we've already got sort of the film emulation has begun. Then just below that we have the updated exposure, temperature, and tint controls, which are much better than before, both in actually using them, as well as you can be more creative with them because they provide a smoother response, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Then just below that is the film settings, and the first one is the film stocks, where you choose the film that you actually want to emulate, and I think there's about 19 or 20 in the list here, and a lot of the fun is actually choosing the film stocks and, you know, experimenting and setting up your own settings that you like to get a unique look, but I'll share with you a few of my favorites from the list and how I work with them. So if we go back to the finished look for this one, so I'm going to delete that plugin and re-enable the one that I had before, I'll go over some of the choices that I made for this particular grade. So for the film stock here, I chose FJ Prove 100. Usually what happens is the first one is the company, which is Fujifilm, and then Prove here is for Provia, that's the brand name of the film, and then 100 would be the exposure in this case. This is the speed of the film, ISO 100. Now Provia is a daylight balanced film, and it's a little bit less saturated than the others, but I've always been a fan of the way that it looks in harsher light. Now the next two controls, the color and curve, you can skip if you're using log because they're intended for standard footage and not log footage, but you can actually tweak them if you want, like I can show you the color one here, if you're trying to create, you know, a unique, albeit unfaithful, look. 
And the developer has told me that these two controls are likely to be replaced in future updates when it detects that using log footage with something that's more like a Cineon to sRGB slider so you can have a little bit more understanding of what you're actually controlling when you do it. And I think the color and curve will still remain when you're using standard footage instead, but will be replaced when it detects log. Next up we have one of the new controls, which is the film print emulation. Now pulling this back will reveal that flat log image you're used to seeing underneath the fully developed emulation. And this can be an effective way to reduce the contrast or tone down the intensity. Now next up, and just like in the previous releases, we have our film size. Now choosing a smaller film will give us less sharpness, but a larger grain. So if we click on eight millimeter, for instance, we can see that our size of the grain went all the way up and the softness went up quite a bit as well. And we can see the image is much softer. And if we play it back a little bit here, we can see that the grain is pretty pronounced and we lose a little bit of that sharpness. It just kind of gives it more of a you know, fuzzier eight millimeter look. And if we go all the way up to 35 millimeter, then the size goes all the way down to four and the softness goes down to zero. You can customize these controls and it's laid out in a much better way than the previous plugins were and you can kind of see it take effect a little bit better. And we also have this new grain response curve here, which has corresponding points that relate to the exposure values that allow you to increase a given amount of grain depending on where in the exposure range that you want it to. So say for instance, if we increase this all the way up here, well now we're gonna get a lot more grain more in the highlighted area. So if we look at this now, we can see that we have quite a bit of grain around these areas around the tree, but not anymore on her skin. But if instead we increased this one all the way up, and now we watch that back again, now look at her skin. We can see that now we have a lot more grain in the shadow areas. So it really gives you a lot of customization over how you want the grain to look. Now, when you choose a film stock up here, it's gonna set all these by default. So if I chose this one, for instance, you can see the grain response went up. And if I chose this one, we have sort of a different pattern for the grain response. But I tweaked mine on the Provia by just bringing down the mid-tone grain a little bit and then lowering the strength from 100 down to 50. This still creates a nice grain that I think sells the fact that it's film, but it's not as intense, which I think is better when I'm putting this on YouTube because for the most part, you're probably not used to seeing any kind of film grain on YouTube. So if I had it all the way jacked up and then you watch my video, it might be a bit too intense. But as you saw earlier when you watch these clips, you can definitely see the film grain, and on some of the clips it's more pronounced, but it's not overpowering when compared to the other more digital looks that you would see on this platform. Now below that we have the new color wheels, which are much better than in the previous version. The ones before I always found a bit too finicky and impossible to control, I'll show you side by side in a second, and these ones are much smoother. So if we wanted to increase the shadows like this, which I did on this image a little bit, in order to bring back some of her skin, because it's obviously quite dark compared to the environment, and then I pulled the highlights down quite a bit, which were usually up here, to make her pop a little bit more from that sort of glowy background. But if I compare this to, so I'm gonna go back to assembly and effects and compare this to the previous Film Convert, so you can see how much of an improvement it was. I'm gonna take the Film Convert Pro, found here, and I'm gonna drop that on. Now we can stack Film Converts, but obviously I wouldn't recommend doing that. So I'm gonna hide Film Convert Nitrate, and I'm gonna expand Film Convert Pro. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to choose the same camera. I'm not gonna bother going through all the steps. It's just gonna be, show you the sliders on the color wheel. So there, sure. And for the film setting, I was choosing the Provia 100. Now, if we jump down to color correction, we can see the old color wheels, which I don't really like the way that they look aesthetically, but also the controls themselves. So look what happens if I try to increase the shadows a little bit. It just I don't know, it jumps on me too much and it gives a lot of that faded kind of look. I don't really feel like I'm masking for the shadows that much. And then if I try to bring the highlights like up, they just like blow out immediately and then down they get too flat immediately. The mid-tones, they just don't really have the same sort of finesse with the controls and this could be obviously a combination of the new log processing, but also I think the response itself is just smoother in the new plugin. So I'll hide this one just in case we need to compare it again and I will re activate the nitrate and now if we do the exact same thing I reset the shadows and I increase the shadows up you can see that it's much smoother and we don't get that weird faded black look we actually get sort of a natural boost of the shadows but if curves are more your game they also now have a custom curve control below the color wheels which is new to nitrate and wasn't in the pro version which I personally appreciate because I often tend to use curves more than I use the color wheels and then below that we have levels just like before but what makes Nitrate great though is how quickly and easily you can get a great looking image. As we look over the controls here, you can see that I didn't actually do a lot to the image and I walked you through most of it already. Bump the shadows a little bit, lower the highlights, tweak the grain to reduce a little bit. 
and then I change the exposure a tiny bit, which you'll have to do depending on which film stock you choose because you might have a look in your mind and then a certain film stock might, you know, blow out your highlights a little bit more or be a little bit more subdued. So you might want to play with the exposure control for that. And I found that the exposure control is much better than it was previously and much smoother, which you can see here as we move through. You get sort of a more natural darkening and brightening that you would expect to see. And then I also added a bit of magenta on the tint control here, which I don't even think was available in the previous one. I think it was only temperature to combat some of the green reflections that happened from the talent standing in the bushes. And that's it. And with just those few little controls there, you get a peaceful and pretty grade, in my opinion. And we can turn it off and on so you can see the before and the after. And this was part of an overall look that I was trying to apply to give it this kind of, you know, rosy, sunsetty kind of vibe, even though this particular one was shot during midday. But those temperature and tint controls can be used in much more creative ways as well. As you can see here, because they provide a smoother response, we can actually use them to color our image in a way that we wouldn't have been able to before. So now we can increase the temperature on this image. I have it up to 164 and the tint up to 71. If I give you a before and after, by turning it off, you can see that it was kind of a duller blue and green image. And now when we turn it on, it's this bright, you know, rosy pinks in the skies. And we have this much warmer light coming on the grass there, really selling the fact that it's a sunset. Again, before and after. And this is just done just by the temperature control. If I move through, you can see that we get a really smooth response on the temperature control all the way down to blue, which is now like really pushing up those blues, and then all the way across to the warmest, which seems like, you know, the pinnacle of a sunset. And we don't get any of the weird effects that happen sometimes when you adjust the temperature or tint on an image that doesn't really want to take it that well. We don't, we don't get any of that. And I think that's because of the way that they're processing the log image here. But either way, these sliders are much improved and give you a lot of creative control over the image to create a look that that might not have otherwise been achieved without going deep into your color wheels. For this one, by the way, we're using the Fuji 8563, which is actually a motion color negative stock where the previous ones were photographic color transparency. And I think this one might also be known as a Turna 250D, which just like before, 250 is for the exposure index and D is for daylight, daylight balanced. And a Turna is obviously one of Fuji's brand names that they use for their motion picture film stocks. I also have this shot here, which has a lot of colors and saturation. Let me disable the film convert nitrate. And was shot at nighttime, so the lighting is a little bit weird and it's dark in the background just to see how it handled all of that. And this first one here I did with the Provia again, you know, brought the saturation down. But I don't really love the light here. I find it to be a little bit eh, boring on the faces, I find. So I use this as an opportunity to convert it to black and white and see how it assigned colors for black and white and what I thought of that. But a quick little comment on this. I thought that it did really well with the night environment to not do anything too funky to the skin, which I like. You can see when the light comes up here and hits this and, and you see the blue here. And if we turn this off and on, you can see it gives a really smooth, nice result, even though the Provia is kind of pushing down the saturation, which you might not want in these night scenes. So now let's jump over to this one, which was black and white. And for this one, we use the Kodak Tri-X 400. And Tri-X is like a really old black and white photographic film, but the ISO 400 version is actually you know, newer than the original, but it's been around for a really long time. And I'm sure you've seen tons of images shot with this film stock because it was used for like photojournalism and everything for a really, really long time. But anyway, what I like about it is one, like I said, how the colors were assigned. If we turn it off and turn it back on, you can see where the blues were allotted, but also how it separated the skin tones. I think it did a really, really nice job. And if we zoom in here a little bit, something that I really like about these skin tones, that might be a bit too much is how it took an otherwise boring shot, like I was talking about, well, at least boring lighting on the face and made it seem a lot more intense and a lot more important and dramatic. So there's the before and there's the after. And it just gives a sense of like, I don't know, importance and emotion to the faces that wasn't there before. This is an example of something where if a shot, maybe you didn't like the light or it wasn't, you know, quite nice in color, that turning to black and white might actually sell the emotion better than it would have in color. And I think that this is an example that worked out really well for that. And so I really like the black and white emulations as well. Now we could go on like this, but I think you get the idea. The stocks are great and the new interface makes them really fun to use. I thought the previous film convert was quite good, but Nitrate is truly on a whole nother level and takes away any issues that I had with the earlier versions. I highly recommend this plugin if you're looking for a fast and enjoyable way to grade your footage or to give your log images a unique look quickly without losing what makes log special. And so for that, I give Film Convert Nitrate 5 Fujifilm Provia 100s out of 5. But that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining And if you did make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining feel free to hit the dislike button twice All right, I'm done